electric field E. And as I say that, I choose A0 equal to 0 K. And the A1 will be, the E is the, the, the magnitude of the electric field. So this is one dimensional system. I apply an electric field E. And A1 is this. Why so? Because remember that E is minus dA by dT, right? Or dA1 by dT. Okay, this is the E and N uh, uh, formula. Okay. So if you change A1 by this much, then the left hand, the left branch and right branch, left moving particle and right moving particle, the energy will also be changed. And it will be changed by V E delta A, right? So, so it will be V E delta T, and uh, the, the the charge because of the uh, right. And in terms of the formula, oh, maybe I would have, I should say this. So you, if you are directly turn on, I, I will comment on about the, uh, the, 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 the use of uh, uh, the of the other. I assume that you turn on the background electric field adiabatically. Okay, I, I will uh, comment on uh, this approximation uh, later. It will not be an approximation, it will be exact. Okay, but I will come back to that. So if you adiabatically switch on an electric background electric field, then, then the right moving, uh, for example, right moving electron will pick up extra energy, and left moving electron will lose energy. Okay, and translated into the uh, the change in in k, it will be delta k equal to charge times e times delta. K. Okay. And if I want to know how many particles moves above the Dirac sea or moves above the uh, move above the Fermi sea, then I just calculate the total change in delta K and divided by the the, the, the the spacing between two neighboring K. Okay, and K is the momentum, and suppose that I, I, I first uh, impose some kind of periodic boundary condition, and the length of this one dimensional conductor is L, and the spacing between two neighboring K is 2 pi over L, and again, this is standard uh, stuff. So the number of, uh, the change in number of uh, right handed, right moving particles will be delta k divided by this uh, quantity. And put everything in, uh, 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 into this formula, you find this, okay? And similarly, delta nl is just the negative of this, so it's just minus this subject, okay? this, this quantity. So, okay, the feature is that it is proportional to electric field, of course, okay? And proportional to delta t, of course. And the rest are just um, uh, parameters, okay, necessary for dimensional reasons. And uh, if we go back to the original dispersion, you can see that it's just you move some some of the lead moving uh, a mode to particles to uh, right moving. Okay, so the total change in chiral charge will be this, right? Okay. Presume this should be conserved, but we see that it is not zero anymore. Okay, and you put the delta nr and the delta nl into this equation, and the total delta n phi will be e Okay, it will be this. And if you, this is delta t, if you divide this by delta t, so uh, left hand side will be delta n phi divided by delta t. And then you divide it by L. L, 
n phi over l will be the density because this is the particle. A divided by l will become density. So the left side becomes the uh, the rho phi d rho phi dt, and the right hand side is electric charge times electric field time divided by pi. Okay. So uh, as I said, rho phi is the chiral charge density. That is uh, n phi divided by l. Okay. And this formula, if I covariantize it, if I covariantize this formula, it will become this. So this is two This is the two-dimensional version of the chiral normal. Yes, indeed. Even though this formula, this theory, is chirally invariant, even though this theory is chirally invariant, just like. It, in the case of three plus one dimension, uh, the chiral current is not conserved. And I just calculated it for you explicitly. So D mu J phi mu is equal to E over two pi F of mu nu F mu nu. Okay. Uh, in case anybody uh, is interested, previously I said that in four, three plus one dimensions, the uh, the chiral anomaly arise arises from the triangular diagram. Remember this triangular diagram. Okay. In two dimensions, it arises from this diagram, the vacuum polarization diagram. Never mind, because we don't need this. We don't need to calculate that. Okay, we already have uh, derived. Okay. So this is the. Uh, the, 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 the chiral normal. Now, how to connect this to uh, the, 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 the quantized conductors I mentioned before? So, remember that the electric current is just the, the, the chiral density times velocity times E, right? The charge density times velocity times E. So if you use this formula and multiply it by E V, we regard V as a constant. Because the frontal velocity is fixed. Okay. That formula will become this formula. Okay. Di, di by dt is this. Okay. Now we can calculate the uh, resulting current through uh, by by this adiabatic in this adiabatic process. Right? Remember that I adiabatically apply electric field, so a current will arise because of it. And now I'm calculating, although it's already clear, but, but let me let me uh, write write out the formula uh, explicitly. I, I calculate the the, 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 the current. The resulting current. So suppose that initially there is no current, okay? So you integrate this formula over time. So you integrate this over time. But VE is just the energy, this subject, this quantity is just the energy gained by the right handed moving fermion from the electric field between zero and F, okay? This is the energy gained by the right moving fermion. And remember that that the energy gained by the right moving fermion is this, and this is so. Uh, the, uh, the difference between the highest energy of the right moving fermion and that of the left moving fermion is E V. This is E V. The high energy right moving formula and high energy energy of left moving formula, the difference is EV. Okay. And half of it is one half EV. It's the energy gained by the right moving formula. So, so this part will be one half EV. And if you uh, plug in this is one half EV and also 
it's already here. Okay, this is the uh, 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 one half EV day. I is equal to this, and and remember EV is the uh, difference in the chemical potential, electrochemical potential of the right end and the left end, or right reservoir and the left reservoir. So, from the so-called chiral normal equation, I derived this the connection between current and the voltage. Okay, let me put back the, 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 the constant h bar. Before I put, I, 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 I say h bar equal to, h bar equal to one. If I put it back, I have e squared over two pi. And so, now it becomes e squared over h. Okay. So this is for, for one branch, for, or I would say for one family or one species of electrons. Or Fermi. But remember that like, electron can have two spin states. Okay, so it, it has either spin up or spin down. And this count uh, this fact account for the extra factor of two. So so there's a factor extra factor of two here. And N is the uh, number of uh, families uh, in hydrogen theoretical energy or species or mode or channel. Okay. So I derive this formula uh, from the so-called uh, chiral normal. Okay. Now, I uh, make two comments. Uh, it is important to Make sure one thing, that is, whatever comes out of the Dirac C or Fermi C in the right branch, okay, an equal number of particles must disappear into the Dirac C, okay, for charge conservation. Remember that I had allowed, I, I feel like the system by allowing the dispersion extend to infinity. Okay, so this is the idealization. And the real system, again, of course, you can see that whatever uh, uh, comes out here, actually they, 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 they are, are the number here, it should be the number there, right? It, it's so obvious from this picture, okay, because the right branch and left branch are secretly connected. Or from the condensed point of view, you would say that it is not secret at all. It, I mean, it, right, it, it should be such okay, because charge is conserved. But in the ordinary field theoretical uh, view, uh, uh, the, 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 the direct dispersion uh, is ideal. So to guarantee that charge is conserved, when you calculate this diagram, when you calculate when you calculate this diagram, you must take extra care. That is, that is you must preserve gate symmetry, because gate symmetry is related to charge conservation. Okay, and that uh, uh, was what confused people uh, initially in ABJ normal. That is, people discuss about uh, whether uh, this way of regularizing the diagram and that way of regularizing the diagram will produce the same result or not. And now we know that, yes, uh, if you insist upon uh, 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 preserving gauge symmetry or insist upon the conservation of vector current because the vector current is the the vector charge is the sum of the left, left moving and right moving particles okay that is the total charge you can say okay so if you insist upon uh, the conservation of 
vector current, the actual vector current can be uh, can 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 be anomalous, can be non-conserved. So uh, you can see that uh, the importance of gas symmetry here. If you do not do that, then uh, and, and and carelessly do the calculation, you, you get wrong wrong answer. And it is also important to know that the notion of Fermi surface is important. Without the notion of Fermi surface, Fermi C, left to right symmetry would not be broken. Now this is rather tricky, so, so let me explain this. Classically, again, let's go back to the classical system. We know that um, the uh, in, 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 in quantum mechanics, the reason that Oh, in, in this picture, so, so let, me, uh, let me see. Classically, we do not have the concept of a uh, 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 So each state or each wave function, each solution, if you apply an electric field, it will pick up energy. But remember, it will not gain velocity because thermal velocity is fixed. So even though each particle has more energy, but the velocity is not, the speed does not change. So if you have, uh, initially, the system is in equilibrium. That is, half of, half of the electrons are moving toward right. Half of, half of the electrons are moving toward left, and you apply an electric field classically. Each sector will gain energy, but, but, but the speed will not be changed. So still, you do not get net current. So the net current arises from the, 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 the picture we have here, although this is uh, uh, something that you, you, you may have already known uh, in solid state uh, class. Um, but sometimes if you uh, stop and think about this, then you can see that it is very different from classical picture. Okay, but this is just a remark. Okay. Now, uh, I would like to mention a further thing uh, uh, about the application of, of the chiral anomaly. Uh, now it's almost more than 30 years, okay, in 1981, and this article was not even the first. Uh, in, 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 in 1970s, there were already paper by uh, Jakib et al. Uh, on the so-called um, fractional Hohmann numbers on solids. Okay. Uh, this is outside of my, my, my main subject, but I, I think I, I could mention it, okay. Because uh, fractional quantum number uh, are also uh, figure. Okay, uh, they also figure prominently uh, in, in in some of the discussions on uh, uh, topological insulators. Okay, so uh, these two gentlemen, uh, Ghost and Will Wilczek. In, in that paper, discuss a theory defined by this Lagrangian. Okay, this is in one plus one dimension. So the Lagrangian is psi bar. So you couple the fermion to introduce a, 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 a pair of scalar particles, phi one and phi two. Okay, so psi bar phi one plus i gamma phi phi two. And the notation of, of are the same as before. Okay. This is the gamma phi is the one plus one gamma phi. Okay, now the three plus one gamma phi. Okay, and you can write this uh, in this way. Okay, where theta is uh, oh, I did not write out theta. Theta would be uh, tangent phi one over phi two. 
Okay, so now we regard phi 1 and phi 2 as external field. Regard phi 1 phi 2 as, as external field. You can see that phi 1 is almost like the mass term because side by side, if phi 1 is constant, it is a mass term, right? If phi 1 is constant, it is the mass term. Okay. Now, uh, for the moment, we regard phi 1 and phi 2 are just external field. And you calculate the expectation value of the fermion current. This is the actual current. Actual, back, uh, I'm sorry, vector current. This is the vector current. You calculate the expectation value of the vector current in the presence of the external phi 1 and phi 2 field. So this diagram, okay, exhibit that, that, that thing. Okay, so uh, uh, this is current, J mu. The wavy line refers to the current, J mu. And the solid line refers to Fermi. And the dashed line refers to scalar, that is round phi 2. Goldstone wheelchair calculate this quantity and found that it is of this form, okay? So uh, you can write it uh, more compactly in this F of mu mu d mu arc tangent phi two over phi one. Okay, and the charge will be this. It will be non-zero. Okay, in the presence of external field, and this is not too surprising. Okay, because you have external uh, uh, field, so you can see that this is induced charge. But the interesting thing is that. The induced charge could be irrational. This may not be the usual simple rational number, one, two, three, one half, one third, whatever, okay. Now, uh, if, okay, so, that goes down where to calculate this object uh, by Feynman diaper and they found this. And they put in phi 1 equal to m over g. Okay. And say that if phi 2 of x goes to plus minus v, v is some constant. Okay. As x goes to plus minus x. So this is phi 2. Okay. It is uh, what we call a solid hole. It is stable by topological reason. If you fix the boundary condition, okay, and from right hand side you move toward left, and it must somewhere switch to to minus v, okay, and and and, and as long as you fix the boundary condition, the crossover cannot be avoided, and this represents a solid. So. If there is a solid, if there exists a solid hole through phi two of x, then the induced charge will be fra fractional, or, or, or although we say it's fractional, but it, 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 it could even you know just a, a real number, irrational. Now, how is this related to chiral anomaly? I uh, uh, the, uh, as I said, that this is outside of my main topic, but uh, uh, some people might still be interested. So I just mentioned it. So uh, just two more minutes on this subject. So uh, I write the Lagrangian or the action in this way. Okay. Now we know that to calculate the expression value of any quantity, I have to calculate the partition function. Okay. And 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 uh, this is the, uh, the Feynman functional integral. Okay. If you haven't seen this before, uh, don't worry, okay. You need, you need not understand this part, okay. Anyway, uh, so this is pass integral, functional integral. And if you can calculate this subject, then you can calculate the, 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 the induced current, okay. One way to calculate this subject is to make a so-called chiral rotation, okay. Instead of using precise as your integration variable, you use chi as your integration variable related to psi by a chiral rotation. If you rotate, if you make such chiral transformation, the Lagrangian will be simplified. But if you, even if the Lagrangian is simplified, remember that when you change the integration variable, they might be non-trivial Jacobian. 
So, uh, so, so uh, if you calculate the, the, the Jacobian, uh, you find that it's such, okay? And it, then, uh, if you calculate the induced current, uh, the induced Jacobian will give you contribution, and this contribution is precisely the result obtained by Goldstein and Wilson, okay? And in the usual field theoretical uh, treatment, in one particular field theoretical treatment of chiral anomaly, the chiral anomaly uh, arises from the Jacobian of chiral transformation. And uh, this was first done by a Japanese physicist, uh, Fujikawa. Okay, so uh, some of you uh, uh, may already know this. So the, uh, uh, no, I, I'm just telling you that the, the interesting phenomena of uh, frictional charge is related, intimately related to chiral anomaly again. Okay, so chiral anomaly is really an uh, interesting subject. Now, uh, the last part of my talk, quantum Hall effect. Okay, now I'm using a graph from uh, Stormer's Nobel Lecture. Stormer is one of the uh, physicists who uh, found interesting things about uh, Hall effect, the so-called fractional Hall effect. Although, uh, uh, so when you say when we say fractional Hall effect, that means that there must be integral Hall effect. Okay, and my 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 lecture today will only be about integral Hall effect or integer Hall effect. Okay, but still I use Stormer's uh, 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 diagram. Okay, so. Uh, actually, this diagram, uh, the, the, uh, a similar diagram already appeared in my second transparency. Okay, so this is two-dimensional uh, electron gas, and uh, there is this a current, okay, in this direction, and magnetic field. You have to apply a magnetic field, and remember that if you apply a magnetic field, a magnetic field, the Time reversal symmetry is gone. Okay, parity symmetry is gone. Okay, and um, we'll come back to that. Okay, anyway, apply and and a magnetic field. You measure the so-called whole voltage. That is the voltage difference between this edge and that edge, the right-handed edge and left left-handed edge and right-handed edge. So. You can measure RH, that is VH over I. Okay. And this is the, 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 the experimental result. Okay. You can see that uh, RH, there exists, uh, uh, you, you, you change the strength of the external magnetic field. When you change the strength of external magnetic field, you change the degeneracy number of Landau level. So, so um, you are changing the so-called feeding factor. Okay, that is the number of particles, number of electrons uh, oc occupying a specific uh, Landau label, okay, the so-called feeding factor. Uh, anyway, you find that there exists certain uh, feeding factor that are especially stable. That is, Rh is constant to very good accuracy. I say that it's good. It is flat to up to one part in 10 to the 9. So Rh is H over some integer times E squared. So this is quantized whole conductor. Now we know that uh, because of this is two dimensional. So uh, uh, the, if you want to uh, get conductors to resistors, it's more complicated. You have to invert a two by two matrix. Okay. But it is not, uh, well, this is just a, a, a simple detail. Anyway, if you go from R, that is rho, to sigma conductance or conductivity in two dimensions, then you will find that the uh, xy.